Hi there, welcome back. We've got some important conversations, discussions, topics and themes to get through today, such as how people will abuse and overuse religion as a form of innocence or to mask their own darkness. And that can apply within the true crime community and also the Dylan Rounds one. We can also look at other like bandwagons and BS forgiveness. And even aside from that, looking at certain small patterns and trends of where it seems like a form of interactional synchronicity, some kind of subconscious mindset of sheeple and the masses that may imitate me, which is very interesting. And on top of that, addressing and replying back to the latest YouTube comments on my recent videos. And on top of that, the odd other external response from elsewhere. Now, apologies if there is any background noise like how there is right now. Unfortunately, there is work going on next door and I'm glad, well, I hope you're able to hear it yourself to understand why I can't be doing my proper videos, what I normally would be doing because the flow would be disruptive and I wouldn't be able to focus. On top of that, I'm still recovering from my cough it is a bit tickly still. I've just got to keep pushing for it. And I think maybe the more I talk, it kind of helps or it helps move it, right? If there's any blockages in the throat or anything like that, it just kind of pushes it on. So it's not got any worse. We'll see how it goes. Now, in regards to this live premiere, for those that are currently here, I appreciate it. Welcome. Maybe fewer this time round because of the themes and topics, the title of this video likely is to be expected. But for those that are currently here, that's good. Share your thoughts, opinions, and feel free to talk amongst yourselves. Whether you agree or disagree with what's being said today, let me know your thoughts. And if you want to leave comments or elaborate further, comments down below under this video, feel free to interact there. It can help. And down below, you will also find a pinned comment by me with additional links in regards to my channel. If you want to show some form of support, it's available. If you want to catch up on my recent videos, or at least my last video that I covered, if you've not watched it, make sure to catch up on it when you've got time. Top right corner of the screen, I symbol, click on that, and you'll be redirected over there. But as for today, a range of stuff to look at and it can apply in general and there are a few reference points more specifically speaking. I do know by now that even when I do these videos and I make a clear disclaimer at the start of the video as to what's actually happening and the language used, people still overlook that and don't bother listening but that's not like the regular audience, it's third party random people here and there and the odd few characters that, you know, hang out elsewhere where they won't bother watching this completely. They'll glance over it and then just move on with a lack of an understanding. It is disappointing, but there's not much more I can do, really. I can explain it once here and then do another video, explain it there. But going overboard in repeating myself, it would be a waste of time, a waste of my breath, okay? So, with that aside, shout out to Maria, of course, for her support on this channel and Super Chats, very good of her, such as last night and the night before. It's good that she's back in the chat more now. And as well, we've seen a return of a few other people in recent time, like Wes and some others. So that's all good there. I said noise next door, apologies in advance if it does get distracting for you. I'll try and talk a little bit louder if it does get noisy. Um, when I go through the comments of my recent videos shortly, the tripod will be on the wardrobe, so hopefully there's no vibrations or anything like that. But once again, apologies in advance if it's the case. Now. Hopefully Confluence is watching this video, Confluence or just in the background, whatever, hopefully comes across this video because it is kind of an important one. And I think in general, there's certain aspects and themes where it can get very deep, but hopefully if people listen to my wording, it should be understood and it shouldn't cause any issues. If it does cause issues for people, 
that's simply because they failed to understand this video and the wording by me. It's as simple as that, non-negotiable, okay? So, the way we're gonna kick things off, we need to acknowledge my recent video. <coughs> I need to acknowledge my recent video comment sections, and it is the Kenny of each one, but as for length and timing, that, that needs to be separate. We look at the two videos that I've done. One, which was in response to the drama elsewhere, where I basically predicted exactly what would happen with a community and a group of people and a case study involved as well. And then the other one was an additional response to Watcher of Crazy. So only two videos, and some people have already taken it the wrong way already and have got ahead of themselves when they like using keywords, buzzwords for the wrong reasons, and it doesn't correlate to the actual true meaning of what that definition of the word means. So they've made a bit of a prat of themselves. That will be elaborated later on in this video. Make sure to stick around. For now, let's get straight into the comments of my recent videos and see what people have had to say in response. So I'm just gonna adjust it to the newest comments. Hopefully the audio is okay. I have moved to a different position in the room, away from the corner where the noise was coming from. So hopefully it doesn't echo too much. We scroll down to the bottom. Not as many comments here, but there will be some additional ones on the second video. That's why we're doing it in bulk. We've got a person called Linda, but a different Linda compared to some of the others previously saying, hi, I'm from California. Welcome to this channel, Linda. Let me know your thoughts on, I don't know, cases, mysteries, you cover and stuff. Then we've got an account there called user um5he1hh8j. Looks like a default profile to me. That is the tag handle saying, we love Buster. Who is we? Only one person agreed with it. Now, we can have a quick look, if possible. This account joined three weeks ago called David Richards. Seems a bit of a default name, that. They've got recent common activity on my channel saying, why call all these people out? You are as bad as them to stay relevant. Another comment saying, are you going to get real content soon? And also, send money. He will be your friend. So this person called David Richards, or spelt incorrectly as David Richards, appears to have had multiple different usernames in the past. Because the comment, send money, he will be your friend. That was actually this default account three weeks ago, commenting towards Cleo and either calling her out or just responding back to her as a strange default profile. So this person has gone under different usernames since three weeks ago. So a dodgy fake individual is salty pancakes behind this account, maybe, or somebody else. Let me know your thoughts. I wouldn't be surprised. I said, it's typical that this happens, but it's to be expected. Okay. Now, the person that says, are you going to get real content soon? Well, clearly this account hasn't been around nor listened to the start of my previous videos. I clearly explained and highlighted why I was doing what I was doing and why I was unable to do my main content, which is to do with an actual mystery case, something which Many people out there in this true crime community can't do themselves because they are stuck in a cycle. When it comes to me, it's out of my control with the BS roadblocks. The illness I have or have had for some time and the noise, <coughs> the noise next door. It's out of my control. If I push on, the quality of videos suffer. Why would I want to damage and harm videos. There is important messages to be put across with those type of topics. I do not need distractions and idiots getting in my way when I'm doing it. So when the time is right, that's when the video will be created. You know, regulars on my channel understand, but as for the others out there and the default profiles, they choose not to listen. That's their fault, okay? Um, 
Interesting the comment where it says, why call all these people out? You're as bad as them. So because I single-handedly covered the Dylan Rounds case and kept it alive, whilst other people walked away and the rest just talked about drama and conflict and brought it into the case, that I'm as bad as them. Yeah, I think that's quite invalid and a useless comparison, to say the least. Closing that down, what was the response? Confluence responding to me, but under this comment, which is a bit odd. Maybe it was a mistake. But Confluence... <coughs> God damn it. Confluence says, Now that Buster Bratimers has left Jim Terry, you will receive less problematic concern likely. Buster has been showing up differently once he left Jim's channel, and I always had good interactions with Buster Bratimers, like so many of us need it. Please give Buster Bratimers grace in that he was mind effed by a criminal YouTuber like so many of us, my humble hope. Well, I do have some response for you, Confluence, because Buster Bretimers has started barking once again with incorrect language and incorrect vocabulary. And I'll show you that in a second, Confluence. Don't go anywhere. But you see what the difference is, Confluence, between you and Buster. With you, Confluence, you may have come from other communities. You may have you know, been under their spell, if that's what you're calling it. But what makes you confluence different to others is you still showed a form of respect, you know, or at least you didn't cause me any problems. You didn't cause this channel any problems in the past. I don't know when you first showed up, but whenever you did, you weren't problematic. So even if you were a part of the darkness at one at one point, you still came across as a good individual, okay? Other people may disagree and have reasons, but at least from my experience, I've not had any negative run-ins with you, Confluence, and it just so happens to tie in around the time of where you were amongst other communities. Well, it shows. So hopefully, Confluence, you understood my wording there, that you compared to others, even if you if even if you have all come across, even if you all have originated from a, a different community out there, you know, you seem to have been able to control yourself, right? Which is somewhat of a positive. Kind of like when it comes to, I guess, Betty Hayward, Miss T. They've been a part of the darkness. But I guess when they came to my channel or um knew of me, they didn't cause me directly any problems. They didn't cause any problems. And even if there have been disagreements within, with time, individually, as those individuals towards me, they've demonstrated a good sense of humour. So, all positive there, right? So, <coughs> apologies about my cough. At the end of the day, you can get people that come from other communities, even if it is unsavoury and dark. You know, these individual people can still conduct themselves somewhat appropriately. But then there are others that fail to do so. And I guess in the past, as experienced and demonstrated, Buster was a good example, like with a few of us. So Confluence, right now, I'm just simply going to bring to your attention a response from Buster in most recent time as to what he's had to say about my singular analysis video about him and the overall topic and themes of what was being talked about at the time. Let's head on over. So as you can see on screen is the comment by Buster Bretimers. As for reference, Confluence, this was on Bob Farrell's latest live stream and posted about seven hours ago as of seeing this comment right now and moment in time of recording. I'm just simply going to read it to you. So this is Buster Bretimers' response to the video that I made two days ago, one video analysing Buster and the overall situation at the time. As said, 
That video was supposed to be made like four days before that at the time of when it was more relevant, but I couldn't because the cough, what I had was that bad, I couldn't really talk much, okay? So I clearly outlined and explained it. And take in mind Confluence and other people watching, one video made, one video referencing Buster Bretimers in that specific way, okay? Buster says, holy shit, Wallight Raff is obsessed with me, lol. I haven't been near that guy's show for six months. He means months. And the last two days, all he does is cry about me. Didn't know I was living rent-free in his dome. Also means head. Anyone know about his recent obsession with me and now Crystal Ann as well? So Crystal Ann was referenced last night in my video, okay? And <coughs> it was only a portion at the start of my video where I referenced Crystal Ann's response to me in which Crystal was supporting Buster and stating that he's not problematic. But as I clearly said and outlined my experience, I witnessed Buster being problematic in the past. He didn't contribute to the case. He just caused disruption on my channel. And I clearly said, it may be different for you. You may have seen the good side in Buster. I did not, okay? So I was balancing it out. My observations, my experiences are valid because I witnessed it firsthand back then. And so did other viewers as witnesses. And they can confirm it themselves. Okay? Now, it's the language that's used here, confluence, by Buster, which I find highly pathetic and a low IQ move. Okay? Several words and buzzwords which don't have correlation to my coverage or references to Buster in recent time. And I am going to briefly explain and outline it right now. So I hope everybody that is watching is listening. So Buster states that Warlight Wrath is obsessed with Buster. Right. <coughs> Why is that? Because I made one video referring to Buster as a full length analysis. One video. That's mainly it. Now, you could look back to the past of where names popped up there as well, but that was across different themes and topics. Of course, you're going to highlight people's names quote people and actions and lines said if it's relevant to a certain topic or talking point. If you don't give the providence, then it's going to lack in understanding and credibility. It's as simple as. The recent themes and topics and with my past predictions all tied together, okay? And with Buster Bretimer's and that drama which unfolded, it kind of originated from him and his actions originally. And I clearly outlined that it was patched up since, but at the time I was reflecting on it as an observation and nothing more. It's as simple as that. So, Buster says that he's not been on my show for six months. <coughs> and to be honest, to an extent, that could be true. I've not seen him for quite some time on my channel, thankfully, okay? I'm glad he's not been on my channel for that time. But for the time he was, as said, he didn't contribute. He just complained. It was disruptive and unnecessary. Simple as that. Hopefully you understand there, okay? Anything else to highlight? I haven't been near this guy's show. So is this the thing? Buster using the language, that guy's show. My channel is not a show. For others out there, it may be a circus performance, like with those live streams, live chats, where it's a complete mess of where people over-talk one another and complain, add mods, block people, 
and create more drama there and constantly stuck in cycles with Jim Terry, etc. Okay? My channel is my channel and I make videos, not shows. Those videos, <coughs> which are pre-recorded, are then uploaded as a live premiere so people can watch first time round and respond in the chat at the same time. It's not a true live stream, so it's not a show. So Buster has used incorrect language here when describing my channel. So clearly they fail to understand what I'm all about and how I conduct myself and the style of my coverage on my channel, okay? So severe failure of judgment there by Buster already, but Jim Terry did the same mistake in the past by referring to me as, let's do a live stream, let me join your show, let me come on panel. It's like, no, it's not a show, it's not a panel, these are videos, okay? These are edited with form of effort, pre-recorded, right? Gathered together the material, the talks, all of it. Others sit on their ass, hit the live stream button, and then just talk, and that's it. Effortless. But for me, who's an actual creator, because I am a creator, I create videos, others just do live streams. I wouldn't say people who have live stream channels or podcast channels are creators, far from it. They're putting less effort than actual creators do, right? Actual content creators put in significantly more effort as a whole compared to live streamers, no matter what the platform is. Simple as that. Live streamers, actual live videos and stuff, they don't have to edit. All they have to do is talk or play a video game. That's it, okay? <clears throat> so let's just get it very clear as there's a difference between a creator and a person that records live stream shows, okay? So hopefully that's clear enough. Now, Buster says, the last two days, all he does is cry about me. So that is a typical response from a person online in general, okay? Over time, whether it be YouTube, TikTok, you know, people's responses as a form of resistance to an opinion or an observation made by me is, oh, why are you crying? Why are you upset? Why are you angry? And this is either coming from people who are responding back to a text-based comment by myself in which you can't tell or highlight the tone of that person's voice or the emotions expressed. Because most of the time, the observations that I make in general, such as online, are emotionless. I talk in a monotone voice, okay? My voice may sound different at this moment in time because I have an illness, right? And it's impacting my throat. Not much more I can do about that at this moment in time. But overall, whether it be a comment as an observation made online or a video made in which people respond back to, either way, people always use the default line of, why are you crying? Stop crying about this. If a human was crying, then a form of emotion would be expressed, such as crying, tears coming from the eyes, sniffling at the nose, mumbling or trembling at the voice, right? That would be a form of being upset, appearing as if one is crying. And as we've already seen within the true crime community and the YouTube streets, as people like to use that trendy word, we've already seen or heard people cry physically, vocally in live panels. It's happened. And some have even shown their face when actually crying. They're crying. Here, an emotionless tone of balance, right? Like with the cases, not going into a case emotionally driven because that would be blinded by judgment and understanding of a case. That's why people went wrong in the Dylan Rounds case. Their emotions got the better of them, okay? So when I'm making an observation, it's simply an observation of what I see, 
of what I can predict, of what I know of, etc. Hopefully people understand that. But Buster Bretimer's response in general is the typical online default starter pack individual of lacking in reasoning ability and assuming that the person leaving a comment or making a statement or leaving a response in video format or text-based content is seen as emotionally driven when it's not, nor is there any proof behind what he claims. So an invalid response once again. This may sound very formal and somewhat serious, but as I've always said, when it comes to moments like this, this is how I respond. Why should I change it? Keep with the flow. Keep with the consistency. Simple as that. Now, the next line used by Buster is, didn't know I was living rent-free in his head. Now, <coughs> that's a line I've heard often throughout time. And I think it's become more of a trending line within the last few years within humans online. Living rent-free in someone's head. It basically means that you're on their mind. They can't get you out of their head, right? Well, <clears throat> look at it this way. Buster Bretimus contradicts himself, claiming Warlike Ref is obsessed with Buster, and it's been like that for the last two days. But for the last six months, Buster has not been on my channel. And in addition to that, for the last six months, I've not really referenced him that much. I've been doing other things. So for Buster to basically say that Warlike Ref is obsessed with Buster just because of one to two days of referring to him seems a bit invalid. To say that someone's living rent free in your head and yet for the past six months that hasn't been the case because other important things have been covered such as the Dylan Rounds case, Christine Passe Parker case and much more. It doesn't quite add up so Buster has contradicted himself there, right? And the definition of obsession needs to be looked at too, which we'll get to shortly, okay? Also, Buster saying that an obsession with Crystal Ann. I mentioned Crystal Ann a couple of times in that video from last night, and that was it. It was probably the first and only time I've mainly referenced Crystal Ann on this channel, for the most part of it. So, one day, 10, 20 minutes referring to her equals obsessions. That seems a bit far-fetched. I think what Buster is doing here is using trending words, lines online, memes, you know, that type of degenerative behaviour like what people tend to do nowadays. It is quite cringe-worthy, embarrassing, impetuous, a little bit pathetic. Let me just respond back now about the whole obsession, okay? Because there's appliances here. It's applicable to mirroring behavior of language used as by me in the past. So confluence, I want to know your thoughts on this, but, you know, just for a second, let me just add on. So first and foremost, just a quick face palm as to the level of idiocracy of what's being experienced right now, okay? So when it comes to obsessions, obsessions, compulsions, or just simply obsessions themselves, thoughts, ideas within here, unable to shake out of one's head. But it doesn't always have to be down to just what's in here, but how one acts around something or someone. You can be obsessed about a person or group. You could be obsessed about a celebrity or a TV show or a cartoon or an anime. You can be obsessed, right? Where you're heavily invested into something but also you put a lot of time into it. But the also, also, the other important qualifying factor is you've spent quite some time going over it, interacting with it, talking about it for months, maybe years. That can be an obsession. 
referring, <coughs> talking, describing about something or someone for just one to two days, mainly just one day, that wouldn't qualify as an obsession, right? You think of stalking, you think of that, that typical idea and concept of it, it can be over the course of a few weeks, maybe a few days, like three, four days, could be months. Different types of obsessions. Obsessions can lead to stalking. Obsessions can lead to just being over enthusiastic about something. But at the end of the day, too much of this can be unhealthy. So an obsession within, towards a person, someone having an obsession can be an unhealthy experience, an unhealthy set of actions which isn't good for them nor for maybe the person on the receiving end if it was to do with a person so like a stalking situation both parties are kind of experiencing negative outcomes the stalker who's obsessed is unhealthy for them it's impacting their health even if they're not aware of it at the time right i know stalking can go different ways, but I'm just basing it on the theme of obsessions and that's all, okay? I know there's other ways. The victim on the receiving end can suffer at the hands of those obsessions because they feel suffocated. They may feel trapped because of the presence of somebody else constantly talking to them, calling them, referring back to them. It can get too much, right? Overwhelming. So, that's like a general way of looking at it. Obsessions towards humans, towards objects. Obsessions as being a consumer towards something, right? And as I said, the qualifying key factor is it lasts for a fair bit of time. That frequency, that consistency, that mindset, single-minded mindset, tunnel vision of one thing only something you're interested in or someone right now referring back to me as for my references and who I've covered and brought up two three days ago now I made a video analyzing Buster Bretimers for and against strengths weaknesses positives negatives I wasn't completely dismissive or negative of Buster I mentioned positives as well. Balance, which other people have failed to do. Other people out there have said Buster is a great individual and they've mentioned nothing negative about him. That's one dimensional. That's biased. If all you can say about someone is positives and no negatives, clearly shows you're a biased individual and you may have an agenda as well. So it's not natural, okay? I said, I've been on the receiving end of Buster in the past, yet I was still capable and able to mention positives about him in a third-person way, which others can't do, right? So I think people need to think before they speak, right? As for the Crystal Ann situation, I said, I spent 10, 20 minutes referencing her and her response to me about Buster. It all connected together. I needed to respond back, as simple as. Now, you could argue and say that <coughs> these background comments are like a ploy to lure me in. So it continues on and on and on. And if it continued on and on and on for days upon weeks, upon months, like it has with other people, that would qualify for obsessions. So I'm already steps ahead as to possible actions some people could be doing out there in between to give a statement or a label towards somebody and act in such a way that the other person responds so you get a reaction out of them and then that person fulfills that label. Basically within society what that structure and format basis is is the self-fulfilling prophecy. So an example in real life would be if somebody was labelled as a criminal, a burglar, right? A rapist. And it's just constantly drilled into that person that that's what they are. And they are not. 
they're a normal person, they've done nothing wrong, but for some reason, by constantly being labelled a certain way, and how they're portrayed and projected by others, that individual that receives all that criticism and false labels, maybe down the line, they end up inheriting certain characteristics and doing certain actions which fulfill that role and label put onto them as a person. They become what they weren't originally. They become what they've been labeled as. Become a new product of the responses by others. That's a self-fulfilling prophecy. I think that's what's being imitated here. And let me just say, that will not happen. We're shutting things down right now. Okay? So, <clears throat> this is an important response on top of the response to confluence. Confluence saying, give them the benefit of the doubt or see them in a positive light. Well, clearly, what you've seen confluence is an irrational, immature individual that's using incorrect vocabulary and keywords for the wrong reasons and for the wrong meanings, which do not link or apply to me and my recent actions, making his overall point and comment invalid. Simple as, that's the bottom line. So he hasn't changed or improved as a person towards me. It is what it is. Now, with Buster saying not being around for the last six months or so, good. Let's hope it stays that way. The cancerous humans with time are moving away. That's what's needed to part ways, to open up that space once again where people can finally breathe and be more normal. I continue on regardless because this is what I do. Okay. To refer back to an earlier comment by that default profile, that random David individual saying about content and some of the people over time doubting me or questioning me. Okay. At the end of the day, I'm a content creator. This is what I do. And that's why I make videos on different themes and talking points. Okay. Other people out there are not in the same position, right? So there's not as much of a motive or a reason as to why they do what they do. It'll be more through petty reasons. I'm doing what I'm doing because I'm a part of the YouTube partner program. It's as simple as. No matter what theme or time or moment, if there's something to cover and talk about, that's what I will do. And if I sense or feel that the videos that can be made may help people in the process, those watching, then that's what I'll do because positives can come from it. Basic positivity, not the fake dark positivity, which a lot of people show within this world. And a few people or some a part of the bandwagon have jumped on it calling it the fake positivity. It's all fake, you know, it's just people jumping on the bandwagon. I was aware of it since 2014, at such a young age, fake positivity. It's a cancer in this world. It can make you worse off. It can make you more vulnerable than ever. But the people that are that way, they can be responsible for making you worse off. And they themselves can benefit both ways. With time, they can show their positive side and cover it from their dark side. More about that later don't go anywhere, okay? So, Confluence, hopefully you understood my analysis and response just then, okay? I'm simply responding back based on valid observations and the truth, as well as common sense and the true definition of words and labels which do not link at all to me, okay? Anything else to refer to? The only other thing that I would say, if there are if there are still dark individuals, a presence out there, the lurkers that come on in claiming to be the winners whilst causing the disruption, still at the end of the day, they're nothing more than a statistic on the channel that's just basically helping the channel grow. So they think that they're winning, they're not, they're just simply assisting in somebody else winning, if you want to call it that. I don't really like the term winning, it sounds a uh, I don't know, a little bit degenerative, right? Just like how I don't like the term YouTube streets. Just like how I don't like the term of where people use keywords and references which don't link in a certain moment or time, right? I'm very specific with my wording and my observations, right place, right time. With time, other humans have tried imitating it and have severely failed. And once again, we've seen that with some. Okay. So, with that in mind, 
let's just return back to the previous comments on my channel and catch up in answering any questions or responses. So, moving on from Confluence's response to me, we do have another comment here by Confluence that says, this video is full of truth, though it may be hard to swallow for some. Very, very grounding to be reminded and validated of histories some now want hidden. Thank you, get better. Appreciate that. Any responses? Okay. Corey says, indeed, all the twisted personalities and ignorant comments I have little, if any, respect or time for any of it, nor do I find it amusing or worth anything more than barnyard sewage. Right. So, <clears throat> even though Confluence is kind of defending Buster, Confluence basically agrees with my video at the time when talking about Buster right, and many other pressing matters and issues, which is interesting to see. Shout out to Glenn. Then you've got someone showing support towards Buster called Dylan Rounds, not Dylan with a Y, <coughs> not Dylan with a Y. <coughs> Sorry about that. It's a goddamn cough, okay? But it, it does seem very obvious that this, let me just click on it, it does seem very obvious that this person is imitating Dylan Rounds, the missing 19-year-old at the time. So you can consider this disrespectful to the case and the family. Who's the type of person that would be behind this type of account? Watcher of Crazy said a person called Just Mike. Never heard of them myself. Don't know who they really are. Not really been on the receiving end of them unless now is the time, but will we truly get to the bottom of who's behind this account? I don't know. Could the person behind Bob Farrell, same person behind this, or not? Could it be Salty Pancakes? You never know, because he's got a track record as well of fake impersonation accounts. Now, there was a time recently where Leanne, the person with black hair, Leanne said, oh, we all have alternative accounts. Well, not everyone, and and not everyone that has alternative accounts piss about and cause intentional disruption elsewhere, or in a sneaky way, okay? Some people will have a alternative account kind of like as a backup channel in case things go wrong or content is taken down, they've got another place to upload on or another place to interact with. Others, though, and as we've seen extensively in the Dylan Rounds case, have had alternative accounts to cause disruption and try dismantling the case and coverage online of Dylan. So it's been done for the wrong reasons and I've seen it, I've experienced it and some have been exposed too. Okay, so there's that. Any comments here? So previous comments saying, I bet this guy sat by himself in the schoolyard. Well, that's incorrect because I did have friends back then. So, once again, um, just an assumption with little substance or proof. So, that's failed on itself once again. The other comment saying, grab a granny on this channel, you spaz. Chat is dead. Channel being reported. Fake news spaz. Interesting that this person uses the word spaz when in recent time there was a fake account called Lillianne saying, why are you using that word, Raph? That's offensive towards disabled people. So I think that this Dylan Rounds account, I think that that Sarah fake account in the past, I think that that, what was he called, beginning with a B or something, BR something, I think it all ties to the same person just constantly changing the usernames with time, right? So the fake accounts that have been calling out Cleo as a stalker, um, being rude towards Cleo, fake accounts just stirring up unnecessary stuff, and that's why I've not really responded back to it in the comments, right? And there's been other stuff. So just as a heads up as well, Confluence, whilst there might be some people leaving comments on this channel which you may agree with as for certain points made, okay? I guess the recent example would have been when that fake account called out Cleo in a certain way. 
and you kind of agreed with it, okay? All I'm saying is confluence in general. Just be aware that there is an increase in fake troll accounts on my channel in recent time. So even if there's certain dodgy accounts that may make a reference or a comment you relate to or agree with, just be careful and cautious how you respond back because if it's from certain people out there of a dark force in the background, lurkers, they could be trying to make you vulnerable once again or cause some kind of unnecessary disruption, whether it be towards you or just simply towards my channel, okay? I can tell when there's fake accounts because they'll have either a default profile, a default username, they've joined one month ago, they've joined a few days ago, you know, like how it says on here, one month ago, and then the other one said uh, a couple of days ago. It happens so often, and there's zero content on the channels, they're just quick default accounts, alternative accounts set up under a certain somebody going about doing the rounds and causing trouble and that's it. And it could all be from the same person or the same people as experienced back in 2022 when covering Dylan Round's case. Because as for the community, as for the coverage, not 100%, but, you know, in terms of the what it's brought, for most part of it, it's brought nothing but trouble to the channel, okay? So that's the Dylan Round's community in a nutshell. Bit of a shit show. Okay, and I'm not referring to that user called that. I'm literally meaning a bit of a shit show because it's caused trouble and unnecessary confusion overall. And those named individuals out there, as well as some community audience members, external ones, may have been participating as well and still do to this day. Hence why we see what we see on screen. Okay, so Confluence, just be aware that there are quite a few fake accounts in recent time. Once again, it's that life cycle span. It's happening. Now, anything else? There you go. There's that fake account which I mentioned earlier, a similar one, um, three weeks ago. So David Richards could be the same person behind Dylan Rounds, just switching and changing between accounts. And if not that, it could be coordinated between a couple of people. Okay. So, <clears throat> Confluence says in bold, saying, think of it this way, it's important to expose dangerous creators amongst us so we don't become the crime stories we are discussing. Yeah, I guess so. And also, I make videos simply because it's the right place, right time to do so, or I get that idea on the spot, so I do it. And then other times I do certain videos in a certain order, because it's the best way to go forwards. And I said, with the recent disruption in real life, with the noises, the illness, you know, i got to rearrange the order of videos, okay? Take in mind, I've covered Dylan Rounds for two years, right? What were other people doing in between? Drama. Yeah, says a lot, doesn't it? What was I doing from 2020 up to mid or early 2022? Kenny Veach for years. So there are things I can do and single-handedly dominate on, but there's a place and a time for it. If you you want me to dominate, I'll dominate. Simple as. You want me to lock the fuck on? I will lock on. Simple as that. Okay? So hopefully when there are no more obstacles or obstructions, I can then focus on Kenny Veach and go deep there right? Can you? Maybe not. Maybe not. And once again, we got that comment again. So we have responded to this from um, earlier. It seems to measure the response activity response-wise here. Shout out to Mad as well, Mad S. Right, that's it for the comments here. Let's move on to the video from last night and see what people had to say there. Here we are adjusting it to the newest Starting from the bottom, Cleo there, welcome back. Someone called Barbara says, Hi Raf, watching the replay sounds interesting. I love Watcher of Crazy and Salty Pancakes. Okay. Then we got Corey saying, I apologise for being so verbal today in chat. 
I have watched repeated ignorant behaviour and comments day after day from people in chats. It's not funny at all. And is verbal sewage done with such behaviour. Sorry, Dylan's death is not a sitcom to my family. And it seems that all I see and hear is personal attacks and nasty, hateful side jokes. It seems something has infected people's minds and abilities in everyday issues. And comprehensive function, really sorry. Okay, so Corey, um, what's it like with Bob Farrell? Didn't you go for a patch of talking to him or something about Dylan Brown's case? Where are things at there? Are you still in touch with Bob? Does Bob still agree with you out of interest? You want to answer, feel free. Mention about Dylan, fake account, and Corey says yes, and as well, the person in chat stating Dylan is alive and being trapped by someone is ridiculous and twisted, disrespectful, all of that. Now, Christy, in recent time, don't know where she was on a different channel to do with other true crime, and someone left a comment referencing Dylan Rounds. I guess I can bring that up towards the end of these comments, so let me know your thoughts, Corey, when we get to that. We've got a person here saying... I think you move on to something new. Sound like Karen. Okay. So basically by bringing up points and making observations that instantly qualifies someone for being a Karen. Right. I mean, it's the same stupid mentality where if basically a male mentioned and highlighted the double standards when it comes to females at times with certain moments that instantly labelled as an incel or a misogynist or when a male simply makes an observation towards certain females that instantly labelled as creeps, weirdos, misogynist with not much context or substance behind it. It's basically the go-to response line. If you can't quite comprehend a formal discussion or an observation, you just jump, grasp the straws and throw labels and buzzwords about. It's truly pathetic once again. But once again, this type of fake account could be tied to all the other previous ones. Okay? But this person has been interacting with the Kenny Veach case, which is extremely disappointing. And they have joined six years ago. So I would argue that on this occasion, this is the type of default profile which isn't directly tied with those other troll accounts, considering this one has been around longer. Take in mind the Kenny Veach case can be toxic at times and bring in these type of crowds, okay? So I think this is a standalone case, okay? But they're still whining and not contributing. Now, Cat Loves says, agree 100% with you, Ralph. That's good to know. Appreciate that. Soul, I don't know if I said at the time, maybe I didn't, but welcome to the channel. Soul says, I'm glad you are a freelance detective investigator. Okay. Glenn, once again, son, get well soon. I mean, it's ironic how the cough has been worse today than it was yesterday. So I don't know why I've gone a bit backwards there, but maybe it's just because uh, the being in the presence of disease-ridden humans out there with their uh, poor reasoning ability. But, you know, this might be the last one we do. <laughs> Confluence says, I think I can speak having been on a call with Salty Pancakes together with Jim Terry learning their manipulative intentions years ago. Even though Watcher of Crazy blocked me at the end of your last live video, though previously we had always been able to discuss from different points of view, and that sucks because it timed with proof. I tagged her in in response to Salty on my community page. Hey, be loyal to Salty Pancakes, but by blocking me after you saw limited proof he has been deceitful, don't punish me for it, dear God. I'm going to dump more proof upcoming than I'm out. I'll always be supporting in the shadows. So appreciate that support, Confluence. So <clears throat> not coming from me, but what 
other people out there, because you know what other people can be like. They could highlight and suggest that by watcher of Crazy's actions recently by blocking Confluence, when Confluence brought receipts in, that could be seen as a form of denial and suppressing the truth, not wanting to believe in it, not being able to handle the truth. That's not coming from me, but that's what other people could suggest, right? When you suppress something, when you respond back to some kind of evidence provided and instead of acknowledging, accepting, or just simply trying to understand it, you just completely block the person. Was that the right move to do? I said, not coming from me, but that's what other people would suggest. Now, Confluence says, thank you, Warlight Ref, for highlighting. I have my own proof on my channel, including in community tab section. That was enough, and I appreciate you seeing me in this crazy YouTube world of master delusions conducted on various panels. The funny thing is, I have been the same loyal supporter since 2021, and it has become quite common for strong supporters being tossed as kindling for the dumpster fires a few creators have created for themselves inadvertently. You have shown such stable, well-spoken, rational and consistency as a creator, and it'll be why you succeed in life at anything you attempt, even beyond YouTube. So, <coughs> appreciate that. Uh, I'm, I am aware, in, in a way, that there have been supporters elsewhere that have come here with time, and you know that's like from the Salty Pancakes community, because I think Weedle B was one, maybe Gorilla Jack at the, at the time, and some others where they were supporters on Salty Pancakes channel, but because they had differing opinions, change of mindset, they got attacked for it and they had to run away in a sense. And I guess other people have had to as well in other communities. And that's why people have come here. You know, at the, at the end of the day, when it comes to here, if people disagree, that's fine. If you got a different outlook or an opinion, that's fine. The only thing that I would say that can be problematic at times is when people come here to purposely cause disruption. I think that's a bit unnecessary, and I think other people would agree, and it has happened here and there with some. But the other thing that I can't quite stand is when people do come, are positive and nice, and then, down the line, they show their dark side, or behind one's back. That type of Mm, don't quite agree with that. But for most part of it, most people seem to be able to control themselves here. And maybe more so, I'm referencing the regular viewers, okay? I mean, I know Badger Life has made her observations recently, and I, I do fully understand that. And like if Badger has mentioned that there are some hypocrites here and there, I can also understand that. Maybe not to the same extent, because I know Badger may have a bit more experience with knowing about other people in other live chats and stuff. I don't quite do that because I'm busy, you know, with my own coverage of videos and stuff. But I, I do understand what Badger is referring to at times. And also when Badger has made predictions or not predictions, actually have sensed what was happening in the background... I can understand that too, whether it be fake drama and some teaming up with one another at times. Yes, it can happen. And I have seen it in other communities, which have been more popular, right? Um, people may not know of that stuff, but, you know, it's happened where people have been in a group, like a YouTube group, they've parted ways or one of the members did, and then they started doing diss tracks, music videos, insulting one another, making it seem serious generating hype and getting together at the end and benefiting all as one. So yeah, different ways it can happen. So that appears to be it there as for the comments. So what I wanted to move on to now, some of the topics and deep talking points, and some of it can correlate and relate back to certain individuals. And don't worry, it's not the odd one that has claimed obsession. So you're safe there. <laughs> but I do sense at times there's been moments where maybe humans out there, certain channels or communities that have copied me, right? 
technically I am the origins, the original when it came to the whole nipple, you know, nipple, literally, that right there. You see? On the dot. What was it all about? Just some light-hearted random stuff, but it took off, people liked it, people referred back to it, but then others expanded and did it themselves out there. No references to the original me. So what it shows is other people have identified that it seems to work or it could be considered successful in some way or another, small scale, big scale, and they've taken inspiration from it. They've been influenced in a kind of positive way, but they failed to reference the providence of where it originated in that extent in the field of this community as a whole. So that's very interesting now. So people have copied the whole nipple trend. I'm the original, okay? And others have followed like sheep at times, at times, okay? Um, I mean, who's demonstrated it? I mean, if I was to give examples, I can't think of any on the spot quite like that, but I know other people have referenced certain names. Because it is one of those things where basically if someone did question you about something saying, okay then, provide evidence and proof of others that have exposed their nipple. Oh yeah, let me just get my case file out with all the screenshots and photos. Yeah, that's definitely a normal thing to do, to have a photo album of receipts of all people's different nipples. What, are you supposed to match it up, like pin the tail on the donkey? Who does it belong to here? Wow, what a big nip you have. Who does that belong to? Hmm? Yeah, I don't think that's going to go down too well. So I'm not going to fall into that trap. I know what humans can do, right? This is the thing in life. Yes, evidence is important, especially in the legal situations and just in general. Evidence can help convince people. It's like the solid proof to suggest what's happened, to prove someone's innocence or someone being guilty for something, right? It's important. But there's times and moments where by getting a hold of evidence, you can actually be worse off than when you were without, right? If you made like observations or like a study of a certain percentage of people nowadays of a certain age dress inappropriately, and if others said to you, where's that proof? Where's those surveys? Where's those open-ended or closed questions? Where are those interviews? Where's that research gone? There's none, so that's not good enough. Come back when you got research. So you're gonna go around asking people of a certain age and gender about inappropriate clothing. You probably get done by the police for that and arrested. Do you see how you can fall in the hole when it comes to trying to get a hold of evidence? It's not always worth it. Just use common sense. At times, that's more than enough, okay? Anyway, that aside, besides the whole nipple thing, people copying, I've seen it with the Fifty Shades. You know, first of all, Fifty Shades of Raph, Raph After Dark. Once again, just a bit lighthearted, messing about, okay? It kind of worked. It shut some people up. It scared others off. And for others, just simply entertained. That's a positive, right? Big black belt here, like that, did the job. And you can tell the original one, because I said, I'm the originator. Look at how damaged that is, okay? This has got more creases in than Watch of Crazy's face, okay? So you can see how worn and how used it is. There you go. So, with that being in mind, who's copied that type of stuff or done a bit of dodgy stuff? Well, Jim Terry with BJ has in terms of certain wording or clothing, acting a bit dodgy and a bit mm, like that. As the originator, I've already demonstrated it when the belts were on, when the black mask was on, you know? For some people, it's nightmare fuel to remember that time. But as witnesses, you remember very clearly, don't you, right? That was already done before everybody else did it. When it came to salty pancakes, did it himself. References to 50 shades, 50 shades of this, 50 shades of that. It, it comes across as copying in a sense. And why does it matter if people are inspired in some way or another? That's a positive. It's because people like that and audience members over time, what did they do? 
call out Warlike Ralph and said, that person is mentally challenged. That person is very unstable. They need locking up. They need to get help. Is that so? Well, if it's that unstable and so corruptive, that bad, then why did you follow? Hmm? Why did you embrace it yourself? Do you need help as well? Typical behaviour from hypocrites, expect no more. They call you out on something for doing something. They imitate it themselves in the future. Pathetic. Really pathetic. I'm disappointed in you. Okay? Now, anything else? Well, certain key words, right? Jim Terry with, with the word usage of microcosm. I was using that word and that term years ago, okay? And I used it more so in the Dylan Rounds case and community. From Kenny Veach onwards to Dylan Rounds, I used the word resistance quite often. You know, you could say I put some of these words on the map, not quite literally, but in that space of time and with the coincidence timing of others doing the same thing shortly afterwards, Jim Terry using the word microcosm, Big fancy word. I was already using it before. Any other examples? Resistance, as I said. Impetuous. I've seen a few people tried mirroring it back to me by calling me impetuous. Failed attempts. Embarrassing. It's people trying to get an upper hand over me to appear more intellectual than they really are. They make themselves look more silly doing what they're doing. Right? Like how people say, act your age act based on your IQ. It might make things a little bit clearer, regardless. Um, IQ as well, I made references to IQ several times here and there to different responses. Then Mr. X started using it at some point too. It's just interesting timing. You know, one doesn't own the copyrights to words used like me. I know. I'm aware of that. I just find it very interesting how, because I've used certain lines and words, which others may not always use or put into regular day-to-day -day vocabulary and sentencing, for those to do the same later, it seems like there's been an influence. But there's never any credit, is there? Like when I do my impressions, certain key lines, catch phrases, expressions, there's always providence and a reference to the individual. If it's something like pinch the nose and talk in a whiny little voice, I, 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 I know I'm stuttering a little bit, I'm not, I, I'm not cold, I'm just really petty. You know who that is already, right? And I've made references, salty pancakes. If it's simple body language like this. Betty Hayward, right? Stuff like that. And, you know... There'll be a few of us, but we don't need to do too many on the spot. I give credit, right, in references, in certain research, in certain material. I keep up with that consistency. Others don't, is what it is. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, the recent copying, the word obsession, which Buster Bretimers has used in recent time trying to use it against me. Didn't work. It was an invalid point. I countered it with common sense and reasoning ability. Made an idiot of themselves. That's unfortunate. But they seem to be making a bit of a occ regular occurrence with that over time. Unfortunate, but it's happened. You could use it as, a, like an, as an, an example. An obsession, in a sense, would be Indiana 59, for the amount of time they spent on my channel complaining, negatively critiquing, and showing a form of hatred towards the younger generation, specifically me. Whether it be videos I made, points I mentioned, or simply photos shared on my community tab. Muscle progression, health updates. It's inspired other people. It's helped others out there. A key individual known as Jay Chuck, 
who has been doing training in the past to join the French Foreign Legion, who's been doing extreme desert hiking throughout time and engaging in trying to search for Kenny Veach in the Kenny Veach MK case mystery. An individual like that said that the photos that I uploaded and the exercise videos helped him in some way. I mainly did it because it was a way of getting rid of storage, okay? So it didn't have to be all on the phone. And I can always look back at those photos in the future to say, this is what I once looked like. And I can compare and contrast to now. Obviously, I won't be comparing right now because I'm a fat bastard. That will change with time. But it's always something to refer back to, okay? But it has supposedly, indirectly, had positive effects on others. But then comes Indiana 59, and all they can say is critiquing, calling out that my back looks like a mess with all the supposed acne and the reactions to the back as if Warlight Wrath has been taking a substance like steroids, enhancements, faking it, appearing natural when not to gain more muscle mass with not enough evidence to prove, right? But that's what Indiana was saying being quite cynical all of a sudden and negative when in the past wasn't as negative, more joking about and a bit more positive. But I said things changed when I responded back to Bob Farrell that time and defended myself. She thought it was overkill and unnecessary and because she supported Bob Farrell at the time, despite saying that she's got no loyalty to, any, to anyone, she stepped up and decided to suddenly start a hate campaign against me and talk behind my back as well elsewhere. Bit backstabbing, yeah. And by that constant behavior, right, of being negative to my channel, you know, you can't stand me anymore for what I've done or said, just simply move on. But they didn't, they stuck around and complained and complained and was passive aggressive and so on. That could be considered an obsession over time it's like an obsession of a grudge an obsession of some form of hatred okay things may have changed since but i wouldn't be aware of because action was taken and steps have been followed accordingly since okay to maintain channel health on here and the health of other cases out there because i don't trust certain people out there like that in how they can act and change at times that can be detrimental to a case and I don't want that to impact other cases out there okay not in a gatekeeping type of way but just simply to you know like damage limitation you've seen the damage it's already caused elsewhere and the trouble it can bring you don't put out the fire it will spread so formal procedure certain response certain schedule that's why I always use it as a small example. The reason why I'm still here, the reason why I still have a channel is because of how I word stuff and how I respond back to things. For other people out there that didn't respond or responded incorrectly, that's why they don't have a channel anymore, okay? And there'll be other examples as well, but I just wanted to give a brief one on the spot, okay? So, what I want to transition on into now, and I don't want to keep it too long, but... I think the whole forgiveness bandwagon and the introduction or introducing religion into certain talks and conversations, I think it's very manipulative, okay? It doesn't apply to everyone. It doesn't apply to anyone specifically yet. There will be a reference shortly. That's individual. But as a whole, people may use an illness, mental health, as a manipulative way of excusing their own bad actions at times, which then they will repeat over and over again. It's kind of like when I came across an American psychopath in the past of a person, with not mentioning any key details, where they basically said that they were depressed and because of that depression, they had memory loss and they mistreated me in terms of verbal communication, disrespected me, insulted me. It wasn't exactly nice. It was very cold and kind of nasty. And they didn't even apologize. Their simple response was, I'm depressed, I've got memory loss, and I'm not sorry for what I don't remember doing. 
right, so if I'm just supposed to accept that, we're just gonna go round in circles, right? Of they say something nasty and we just move forwards because, oh, they've got an illness, let's forgive them. Screw that shit. That will be vulnerable, that will be weak, and it'll be repetitive in going through the same cycle over and over again. Why go through that suffering, you know? Why excuse their actions just because they're in a certain way? Shouldn't excuse it, they've done something bad, right? They need to be held accountable, or at least they need to be able to acknowledge something, but they didn't. Manipulation. And there'll be others with time, celebrities as well, that we use mental health as a way, talking about it, relating to it, as a way of growing and bringing in a wider audience of others that may have those issues and relate. Let's all relate together and talk a load of BS, appear as caring and understanding. Let's even take the filter off and appear very vulnerable, add a few teardrops on the sides, say, oh, bad things have happened in the past, whether they have, whether they haven't, whether they've been exaggerated or not, to gain favour from the public, to gain popularity. It's manipulative. And others will do the whole mental health bandwagon act when they're caught out. Do you like how when people are sorry? Yeah, sorry because they got caught out. Well, some people that get caught out or exposed will then say, oh, I, I, I've got depression. Uh, I've, I've got anxiety. Uh, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Uh, fake suicide attempt, whatever. They'll do anything. Manipulation. Manipulating everybody around them so they feel sorry for that person, right? Not that it quite applies in terms of the mental health thing, but more of a, a physical possible form of manipulation would be the Dylan Rounds case in court, whether it's entirely true or not, but the response from Candice Cooley and Justin Rounds towards James Brenner back in 2023, getting towards the end of the year where Brenner... <coughs> where James Brenner was going into court and he was limping. Candice Cooley, Justin Rounds, in an interview by Nate Eaton, East Island News, later after the court proceedings were done, to do with the appointment of the attorney, the arraignment. Basically, the, the parents said, we think he's doing it for the camera. He's playing it on, he's appearing all vulnerable, injured and hurt like a wounded animal, so people feel sorry for him. That manipulation, that psychological manipulation and getting other people to feel sorry so there's more leniency towards you and the heat levels are reduced. Yes, it happens. Criminals, normal people, celebrities, whoever, people are capable of it, it happens. It's pathetic, right? It's not always easy to identify, but I've seen it so often, I see the patterns, just like with everything else. And take in mind, most of this stuff I was mentioning was when I was 14 years old, 2014. A lot of what I'm saying right here, right now, is what I was saying those years back, right? So for a short span of time on this earth, in some way or another, I've seen a lot or I've picked up on a lot quicker than others. Is what it is. Fucked up, but it's happened. Now, let's link back to the whole religion aspect because that can be involved in communities, cases, just in general, right? Whether it be a form of bringing people together or as a form of covering for one's own corruption. In general, religion can be interpreted in many different ways. It can be interpreted as a form of control, a form of brainwashing, radicalization, etc., which can lead to for further problems down the line towards themselves getting involved or towards others that may be impacted, you know, um, collateral damage, suicide bombing, knife attacks, etc., right? But that aside, the positives would be religion could be seen as a form of guidance, a form of seeking comfort, a form of bringing everyone together as a community, as one and relating. Pros and cons, of course, like with anything and everything else in life, okay? But there's always people in between that will use it for their own gain, just like the whole mental health bandwagon, right? And I think I've picked up on it on recent time. I think the whole religion aspect, when it comes to certain people out there using it for other reasons, is pathetic. And we just briefly highlight it right now. This could be too deep for some people. Some people may need baptizing after this. You do whatever you need to do, okay? But no Bibles thrown at my head. That'd be appreciated. So, <clears throat> like with the whole forgiveness, because I'm sure forgiveness is teached and taught about within the Bible. At the end of the day, I'm not a religious person to that extent, okay? I'm not full on. Um, 
what else would I say? I don't refer to myself as a good person or a bad person, I'm just a person, right? So I've said it several times with time, some of you will know, just laying it out there so people do understand. But there'll be other people out there that may sit on a pedestal or some kind of moral high ground and claim to be better than others when they have fucked up themselves previously. And we've seen that often within the communities, true crime communities, Dylan Rounds communities, where people will criticize others for certain actions and mistakes made, but they made the same mistakes previously. So they should show a greater and better understanding considering they've been there themselves. They've been there, they've worn the t-shirt, but they don't. It's pathetic and it's a failure on their end. They didn't learn. When it comes to me, less experienced, whether it be because of age, whether it be because I've not been around as much, such as on certain communities and platforms as other people have with the long-term connections, okay. And limited in experience because I don't engage in actual live panels, live streams like that or elsewhere because I do my own thing, I keep to myself, it works for me, it's more comfortable, okay. So you could say one limits themselves, they limit their own experiences, that must mean they limit their own knowledge, but that's not always the case. The only time what I have limited, which is a positive, is by limiting certain experiences and encounters, I've also limited the negative consequences that can come from it. So by spreading myself out there and spreading my legs as wide as the channel tunnel, by not doing that, by not going on other panels, I've not been a target. I've not been shut down to the extent as others have, and I've not been attacked to the extent of others have. Yes, I've had my own fair share of other encounters, exclusively, individually, but I've not gone through what others have gone through because I've not made the same mistakes. And I didn't have to make a mistake in the first place to learn from it. I already knew before it happened. Advanced, built different. Not everywhere, but in certain departments for sure, okay? And I can pick up on things before it's happened too. Not everyone believes me, but when it does happen, when it's too late, then people know, and then people are like, oh shit, we should have listened. It happens, and it happens many times in life, okay, and with others too. So, link back to the whole religion aspect. Teaching, or practicing, acknowledging the whole forgiveness. Moving on, moving forwards, together, rather than separate. It can have its usages, it can work, it can be practical, it can be for the best. But depending who you're around and what community you're in, if it's already fragmented, might not be the best decision. And as we've seen within the Dylan Rounds community, true crime community, a lot of people have kissed and made up, burned down bridges and repeated. They've had trouble, broke up, apologised and then broke up again down the line. It's a never ending cycle. It might not happen all in one go, but it eventually gets round back to certain people. So much switching and changing, just like how the story went with Dylan Rouse, similar to how people and, you know, connections and allegiances have changed with time. A lot of bridges burnt down between people, then fixed, patched up later, and that band-aid has been ripped off once again, and that wound has been exposed. Those long-standing bridges have creeped back up, and it's just been a never-ending <coughs> never clusterfuck, Okay. Moments like that, with people like that, forgiveness is a waste of time. You can try it once, maybe twice. If it doesn't work, lost cause, move forwards, right? I've demonstrated it myself. I've come across humans. I've apologised to the odd human in the past. It backfired. I was worse off more then than I was before. Or they retaliated back, I don't know, or doubled down. It wasn't worth one's time. The forgiveness factor wasn't worth it. Now, I'm not going to do it the same way as I normally do because I've done it too much and my cheeks are already red, so we don't want me looking like a crab because I might be appearing on BJ's channel very soon and there ain't no makeup on me because I'm natural, bitch. Completely unrelated. Just being lighthearted there in case anyone gets the wrong end of the stick. But think of forgiveness like this, okay? Think of like, um, think like daddy is in front, okay? Daddy, what are you doing to me? Why are you unsheathing me, Daddy? Why are you exposing me? Oh, this is such a naughty thing, my God. Ah! Daddy, why did you do that? And then Daddy would say, I'm sorry. It was a mistake. Forgive me. I didn't mean to. It was in the moment, heat of the moment. I will never do it again. I'm truly sorry. The other person would be like, well, you know what, because I'm all about religion. 
and I'm all about forgiveness. Mm, daddy? Yeah, Daddy, I forgive you. Don't do it again, but I do forgive you. Let's move forwards. What happens next? Ah, oh, Daddy! Ah, oh, Daddy! No more, you really got my nipple there. Ah, oh, it's going really hard. It's not the only thing. Daddy, why are you doing this? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. It won't happen again. And guess what happens? The person forgives and it's on and on and on like a never ending cycle. Do you understand? At times forgiveness is necessary and is worthwhile. Other times it's not. And quite often within these communities, it's not worthwhile, okay? Cut your ties, cut the dead ends. If it means holding on and it could lead to channels being dragged down into darkness, into cancer, and it affects the health of the channel or affects the health of you, some form of action is taken. Now, of course, the act of pulling away isn't always easy. That can have its own difficulties and challenges, but at least trying or attempting is what matters most. So yes, I do think forgiveness is good, but also it can lead to being led to a more vulnerable state. You can move forwards, you can try and forget and move on. You don't have to forgive them. You know, someone can do something bad, you may move forwards with them or in the same direction as them, but you never trust them again, or you may never see them the same way again. But if there's a greater cause or a reason, you may have to put up with them or be side by side with them. And maybe that's what's kind of happened within some of these communities where people have kind of just moved forwards together, not because they're truly forgiving, but more because they're just here for the community and the other person is as well for their people and they just happen to be all in the same place and they've got no choice but to just get along because they want to be with the other people hanging out. But that can have its own problems and it can create an atmosphere with time. So that leads to more drama and conflict. Yes, basically forgiveness. You get fake positive people out there that will tell you to do this and that and give out lots of quotes motivational speeches, you listen to it, you follow it, you find yourself worse off, more hurt and more damaged than ever before. That fake positivity has damaged you, has hurt you and made you more vulnerable. That's great, isn't it? And what do those positive people do down the line? They pick you back up and then sometimes tell you off. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? You should be strong. You should stand up for yourself. You should resist. You should do this. And it's like, that's typical from all these fake positive people. They're like spamming the fucking Wattpad notepads like they do on YouTube with the positivity and the quotes over and over again, really spamming it in such a delusional positive way. And then when someone follows that method and when it doesn't go right, Oh, they change, they change their tune and subject very quick. They go from motivational positive speaker to a realist all of a sudden. They've always got an answer for everything. That's the problem with delusional, fake, positive people. I can't stand them. I detest them. Okay? Once again, this deep talk doesn't always relate to a certain somebody. Okay, just take that into mind because I know when I make my videos, people, some out there, always like to make it about them and think it relates to them. Does it really? Is your name mentioned up to now? No. I'm speaking holistically up to now. Take that into mind. Okay. What I'm saying here is what I said at the age of 14. It's not changed. I'm consistent. Simple as. So. The forgiveness can be teached within religion. That can lead to being more vulnerable down the line, right? Obviously, within religion, there's other teachings and other practices, good and bad, whatever, okay? But the general concept of using religion as a form of positivity towards a group, the masses, or someone, maybe at times to cover their own darkness, I think that is pathetic. And I think it is a bit dark. I think it's very manipulative. I know at times people can change compared to what they once were, but if there was never an acknowledgement with time through the movements forwards, then maybe there's another reason as to why they're doing what they're doing. They might be apologizing to somebody else. They might be kind to somebody else, but what about their past? Did they ever right those wrongs? No. 
And some might claim that they did by doing good acts and good actions elsewhere. That doesn't fix the past, though, does it? So, manipulation's going on, okay? I'm going to give you an example right now, a bit of a small case study focus. This is where we get a bit more specific, and I'm only doing this because it's a valid point and it's happened in recent time, and I've just so happened to come across it. I'm going to read it out to you and then provide a brief backstory of what this person's all about and what they've been known to do previously. Okay, let me show you. So what you see on screen, whether it be a poem or more so a religious reference, nevertheless, a form of positivity and hope in moving forwards, that's the theme of this. This is by Indiana59, once a viewer, a participator on my channel during the early days and late days of covering Dylan Brown's case. Indiana59, not exactly walking away from my channel, but showing a darker side to them just because I defended myself against Bob Fowle. It had nothing to do with Indiana at the time, but she made it more about her and involved herself within the conflict and then started going all dark on me. So, the origins of this recently on Watcher of Crazy's latest live stream, providing it's not been taken down yet, Indiana has left a comment there saying, Forgiveness. Forgiveness is your greatest weapon with it. Evil can no longer threaten or be a threat. Your hurt as pain no longer its source. Conquer until it feels its own remorse. But leave it not to then forever wallow, show it by the way of God to then follow. To control its hurt and then hurting you because until then your job is not free. Okay. I think, first of all, to be weaponizing the art of forgiveness is where one goes wrong. A form of peace, a form of adapting in some way and moving forwards. You shouldn't have to weaponize anything. You shouldn't have to combat to begin with. You can resist against the darkness. You can resist against evil in life. You don't always have to weaponize it, then. So that almost militaristic form of combat and war used within these references. Not exactly a good start, especially coming from an individual that practices a certain religion of peace, when at times it's far from it. Disappointing. But the reason why this is extremely hypocritical is considering the way Indiana has behaved previously. Let me explain. Indiana 59 previously for some time for a couple of months was passively aggressive, cocky in their responses, replies with underhanded points made and digs aimed at me as well as critiques made too. On top of that accusing Warlight Raf for taking substance, substances like steroids because of the reactions to one's back. Indiana showing a form of negativity to a form of positivity when demonstrating my health updates and progression when building muscle, losing weight, describing my back as a mess and also referring on Bob's channel that even though Warlight Ref isn't 40 yet, by the time he is, he'll be crippled, messed up, a bad back, unlucky him. That's very immature behaviour not exactly hopeful or positive for the future. So for Indiana to preach about forgiveness and just simply the theme of moving forwards, moving on in life through the years, through time, through ages, and yet Indiana was almost predicting that by the age of 40, I'll be a cripple. Well, that's very positive, okay? But also very two-faced and hypocritical, right? Upon being a part of religion in a, a positive way, in a positive direction, and preaching to others, you know, maybe there's correlating behavior, who knows, but preaching to others, Indiana 59, when you yourself have displayed quite a bit of darkness and shown your dark side, your hatred towards others, talking behind other people's backs, backstabbing, showing no loyalty, because you claim that yourself, you have zero loyalty with anyone, you refer to yourself as the devil's daughter. The devil's daughter. Not exactly friendly when speaking of religion in a sense, it seems like a form of opposition, the darkness to evil, you're referring to yourself as the devil's daughter, right? 
I've referred to my experiences encountering the devil in the past, but I don't come across as a hippie, dippy, positive, delusional individual, nor do I preach religion, okay? I said I'm not a good person, I'm not a bad person, I'm just a human, I'm just here, I'm doing videos, I'm talking, I'm doing what I can, okay? Simple as. But once again, are, are we jumping upon a religion, a religious pedestal of a form of guidance and knowledge and growth and wisdom? With all that experience spent on this earth, and yet one has revealed your inner dark side and what you truly think, what you've stored within for some time. It's not a good look. It's disappointing. And turning to religion to cover one's own darkness, you could call it a form of moving forwards. Yeah, then. What about that now? But then, no. And who with? Well, there's no apology. It's more of, more of a positive message towards watch her crazy at a time of maybe where watch her crazy is going through hard times or drama online. Okay, I never saw any of that. All I saw was Indiana pissing about and leaving lighthearted poems and stuff. Not exactly fixing any situations. And when things were going on behind the scenes, people were talking behind me about me, Indiana was participating in a... Hallelujah! Bless me, Tyler, because I feel that I need cleansing from the hypocrisy of humans out there. Jesus. Mm -mm -mm. Was there anything else to highlight? As I said, this is all based on observations and experiences of what I've encountered and seen. If people don't believe me, there are many witnesses present right here, right now, that have seen it themselves. Okay? Many. Some still think the best in... Indiana and stuff, but, you know, take off those delusional glasses and see, see it for what it is, or at least why it was at the time of when it was documented. It's documented on my community tab in certain areas as well. There's even external people from other communities and elsewhere, like Betty Hayward and a few of us, in which they saw Indiana too talking negatively about people and also negatively about them behind their backs. So there seems to be a bit of a running theme over time. But if you didn't quite understand the whole point of this is, it's just simply highlighting the hypocrisy, how someone can either turn to religion or preach about a religion or religion in general, about important lessons in life when they themselves have made mistakes and they've not writ those wrongs. And they could still be making those dark actions with time whilst masking it with the positivity of religion, forgiveness, and all that crap. Get real. Be realistic. So this stuff could get dark, could get deep, not messing about, okay? Being straight to the point, I detest hypocrites. But isn't everyone a hypocrite at the end of the day? When I'm talking about hypocrites, I'm talking about hypocrites, right? People that will do something bad, or call someone out for something and then do it themselves. It's like a, a form of benefiting in both ways by doing both stuff, but not appearing um, in, in, the, in the dark act, being exposed to what they have done. On the fence about things, some people will know what I'm referring to because I have mentioned examples of hypocrites with time. It's just certain types. Mm. Anyway. People can throw in the, the default lines and the responses of, well, whatever happened back then, things have changed now. Huh. Have they really? Maybe for you, but not for others. When the cracks form, when it becomes fragmented, it will implode with time. Wherever, whenever, what type of environment, online, in real life, it will implode. Structural integrity lacking. Using certain bandwagons and methods and practices to pull the wool over people's eyes or to mask their own darkness. Mm. Manipulation at its best. There we go. So as one played the devil's hand tonight, who knows, but I think when you look at it at the end of the day, with my observations, my valid points, quite a few people have been caught red-handed. 
disappointed. Daddy is disappointed. Okay, so we'll leave it there right now. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, you find it somewhat of use or interest to you. At this rate, I have no clue what the title of this video will be, okay? Because a lot has been talked about, and there's been a lot of coughing as well, because there's this bloody cough and noise next door by that twat. But that's it for now. I'll see you next time, whenever the time comes. And in, in addition, take in mind, for as long as there is disruption out and about with the noise next door and the cough, I can't do the videos that I want to do, right? But when things improve, I will. So good night, goodbye for now.